Without question, one of my favorite filmmaking teams is the Coen brothers. There's an indefinable quality that runs throughout their work. It's like their own genre of filmmaking. It can be silly and absurd, then turn pitch black. It can incorporate surreal imagery into slapstick comedy. It can be a western horror movie with an art house sensibility. And, in the case of Miller's Crossing, it can be a violent, prohibition-era gangster film with homosexual characters. This is a thematic element that, quite honestly, I was unaware of for many years. I love the interwoven plot points, the hard-boiled characters, the vintage dialogue, especially the dialogue. So take your flunky and dangle. Drift, small guy. Drop dead, ape. I'll see where the twist flops. His fancy pants, all he is. He asked me to ask you to ask Leo to take care of him. You know, putting a good word with Leo. Leo listens to you. Not that Leo wouldn't help the Shimada anyway. A guy like Bernie is squared you like the Shimada, a straight shooter like him. The Coen brothers can create such a beautiful landscape for their characters to inhabit. A handsome movie about men in hats. But it wasn't until I watched a DVD extra with Barry Sonnenfeld that my understanding of Miller's Crossing was turned completely upside down. At the end of the movie, John Turturro came up to me, and John's performance is of a sort of whiny, needy, obnoxious, homosexual Jew. Bernie Birnbaum is Jewish? I mean, gay? Seriously, I had no idea that John Turturro's character was gay. So, naturally, I had to rewatch it with different eyes. When I did, it was like, how did I not see this before? The way his sister protected him, and as he put it, even tried to convert him with her own sexuality. She'll sleep with anyone, you know that. She even tried to teach me a thing or two about that artistry. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> My own sister. <laughs> Some crackpot idea about saving me from my friends. Then, of course, there's his close relationship with Steve Buscemi's character, Mink, a character we really only see once, not counting his death, but who has a really big impact on the story. Mink is the informant who gives Bernie inside information about the fights that Johnny Caspar fixes. It's this event that sets the entire story in motion. Johnny tells Leo to give up Bernie. Leo refuses because he's dating Bernie's sister, and Johnny makes a move to take over Leo's business. Complicated, sure, but then it's made even more so with a love triangle between Bernie, Mink, and the Dane. Eddie Dane, the biggest, baddest character in this movie, or any other gangster movie. He's the embodiment of brute force, even the way he cocks his revolver is menacing. And he's gay. And what's more, nobody cares. Uh, Mink is Eddie Dane's boy. If Eddie Dane finds out that you got another... Amigo. Well, I don't pack him for the other stuff. Only the Coen brothers could put together an epic crime drama set in the 1930s with openly gay characters. It's like a detective story with a tide-eyed stoner at the helm. These characters inhabit their time and place with the greatest of ease. Bernie is considered a degenerate, partly due to his homosexuality, but primarily because he's a smarmy backstabber. And I was gonna leave. Honest, I was. But then I started thinking... If I stuck around, that would not be good for you. Then I started thinking that that might not be bad for me. But the Dane is feared and respected. The doubt that Johnny has about his character has nothing to do with his morals. It's more about... Ethics. In this world, your sexual preference does not determine your character. It's your actions. So why did the Coens make this character choice? Was this something they wanted to stress or simply imply? The movie was released in 1990, which means it was probably written in the late 80s, a time in America when homophobia was the norm. The story itself was inspired by the work of Dashiell Hammett, but that Coen Brothers touch, that indefinable quality I spoke of, is on full display. They are masters at subverting audience expectations through plot, casting, and our understanding of characters. Does the fact that Bernie is gay make him any more despicable? Not at all. He takes care of that with his everything. What were you going to do if you caught me? I just squirt a few and then you let me go again.
does the fact that the Dane is gay make him any scarier? Not possible. I followed you this afternoon, and I wondered why Einstein would want to talk to a gorilla. So I grabbed the gorilla, and I beat it out of him. These characters' proclivities simply add to the tapestry of the story. Like the affair between Tom and Verna, it elicits a response and incites conflict. But it has nothing to do with sexual preference. It has everything to do with the feelings one character shares with another and the emotional response it can produce, whether it's tenderness or rage. You killed Make you son of a bitch! It was Make you son of a bitch! It was Mink, and by God, I'll hear you say it. These are just characters, Coen Brothers characters, who are often embroiled in circumstances that are completely irrational and unpredictable. But, in the end, everything has a way of making sense. So whether the homosexuality was toned down by the studio, or kept purposefully vague, I like the fact that this movie has another layer to analyze.